How's it going everybody? I'm Darius Quartermaster here and on today's episode I'm going to show you how I went from a standard Black Series Bo-Katan Night Owl helmet to this custom beauty right here. Now there's a lot of videos out there that show how to convert a Black Series Boa Fett into a custom helmet but so far there haven't been any showing how to do it with the Bo-Katan. This will not be an unboxing video however as there's about 50 of those so if you want to see uh, an unboxing of the Bo-Katan helmet please feel free to just type it in in the search bar on YouTube there will be a ton of them but what I'm going to show you today is the process by which I went through to disassemble this helmet, customize it, paint it, and put it, well I'm not going to show you how to put it back together, that was a complete nightmare. I'm just going to tell you at the outset, putting the thing back together is not as easy as it is taking it apart. But I'm going to show you the process that I went through to achieve this result. I want to throw a special shout out to the Welding Geek uh, because it was his video on converting the Boba Fett uh, Black Series helmet that showed me how to take this thing apart. So uh, buckle up, come on along, we're going to have a good time. When you first open the box, the rangefinder earpieces are not connected, but if you couldn't resist putting them on, you can easily remove them by hand. Next, you're going to want to remove the headliner suspension strap assembly, which just snaps into the ear cap interior pieces. Gently tug on the hanging pieces of the strapping in the direction of the center of the helmet. Once that side pops free, use the rest of the assembly as leverage to pull the other side out. Next, remove the various screws from the interior left ear cap, which will release the exterior cap as well. The interior vent cover assembly helps tie the internal padding panels to the helmet interior along with the internal ear caps. Remove the four screws were shown and set the cover screws and left ear cap pieces aside in a Ziploc bag for safekeeping. Next, remove the screws holding the electronics and battery assembly to the right interior ear cap. There are two last screws located here at the top of the back padded panels but also tie the top helmet liner to the face and crown part of the helmet. These are easy to remove but very difficult to line up just right when putting the whole thing back together. Once the last two screws are removed, the back portion of the helmet pops off and you can remove the back padded liners. The crown lining then pops free from a little flange in the front of the interior face shield that holds the visor in place. Unscrew the interior visor mounting assembly from the faceplate and set aside with the screws.
want to rough up the surface of the helmet so that the primer will adhere better to the already painted exterior. You can use sandpaper, but I prefer scotch Bright. Make sure you rough up all of the painted surfaces of the helmet. I don't recommend wet sanding or roughing because you are not trying to make the surface smooth at this point. Using a paper towel or microfiber cloth, wipe all surfaces clean with rubbing alcohol. It stays wet only long enough for the grit and grime to be removed and it dries quickly. If you're seeking approval for membership in the Mandalorian Mercs Costume Club or simply want your kit to meet their standards, it is mandated in their rules that all visible gaps be filled on the helmet. In the case of the Black Series Mando helmets, the main concern is the sliding window on the rangefinder as well as the associated ear caps covering the electronics. While my helmet rangefinder meets these standards, I still need to address at some point the gaps that the associated ear caps have. I don't mind permanently closing the see-through part of the rangefinder because in order to seal the gaps, I won't be able to access the battery compartment for the special effects anyway. You can use any number of different fillers from Bondo and similar materials, but I prefer Milliput because it has a longer working time and can be worked with water to help thin it out and make it easier to work with. You do want to wear gloves when using it as it can be a skin irritant. This is the area you'll want to fill and permanently prevent from being able to be opened. As I understand it, it doesn't have to be flush, but there cannot be a gap. To really achieve an authentic used universe look that Star Wars is known for, most cosplayers prefer, and in fact the MMCC requires, a certain amount of weathering that is consistent across all aspects of the costume. Modding the helmet involves the previous steps of filling gaps and weathering prep. Customizing refers to your chosen paint scheme. These are two very different steps. You want your weathered look to come from within the customized paint scheme, and that requires a detailed process of layering and masking apart from the masking necessary to set up your particular livery. It is important to remember to use a primer that is made for bonding to difficult surfaces, as plastics are not always the best at taking paint. Always work within a well-ventilated area and or wear some sort of vapor-rated respirator and eye protection for safety. Use short side-to-side -side strokes with your paint, not too close, and avoid lingering in any one spot to avoid drips. While this helps, sometimes drips happen anyway. Wait till they dry completely, then sand the area smooth before continuing. Just in case you accidentally scrub your weathering masking material off too much, I recommend using a flat iron colored base below your shiny silvery best car undercoat.
Next, I used a high luster metallic silver to serve as my base metal Beskar layer. It is upon this layer that my weathering mask will begin to be applied. As Mandalorians prefer Beskar as their primary alloy in making their armor, I painted every piece of the helmet with the high luster silver metallic paint and let it dry thoroughly before the next step. In order to achieve the look that the dings and scrapes of your helmet's paint are the result of top-down wear and tear, you want to mask off the shiny part of the paint job and paint over your masking medium with each subsequent layer, adding little bits of additional masking around the edges of the original with each new layer of paint. It is important to use a medium that will not dry but will instead be easily rubbed off or washed off to reveal the battle damage beneath. Various materials have been used from rubber cement to mustard, but my preference is toothpaste applied with a sponge. By patting it on with a sponge, you get a chaotic peeling effect to the paint job that looks like natural wear and tear. As you can see, I already started hitting various areas of black over the top of the toothpaste. Next, I masked off the areas that I did not want to get light blue paint on. And so on. and so on. And so on. You get the idea. You paint one color and mask it with masking tape, in this case Frog Brand, then paint another color and repeat until you get all of your colors. After letting your paint thoroughly dry, remove the masking tape carefully then wash away the painted over toothpaste areas with warm water and paper towels. For areas that are more stubborn, you can use a sponge, but be careful not to rub off the paint beneath. If you do get a little carried away, hopefully you won't go below the flat iron metallic layer.
Using red acrylics, I added a mythosaur skull to the face of my helmet. To tamp down the brightness of the acrylics and add some further grime and weathering, I made a black wash and coated the helmet with it. Black wash brings out the nooks and crannies, revealing details otherwise missed. To make a black wash, add black acrylic paint to water and a drop of dish soap. Be careful, the more acrylic you use, the darker the effect will be on your paint job. Using a sponge brush, apply the wash to every piece of the helmet. Angle each piece so that the wash flows to the bottom of it and settles in the cracks. Wipe off the excess. Once the helmet is dry, apply a clear coat sealer and let it cure. Once this dries, you can go ahead and reassemble the helmet. And now... As always, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get future videos. All content and music is copyright Clinton Michael Williams 2022. All rights reserved. Check out my Facebook page on an Imperius Quartermaster. Special thanks to the Welding Geek for his Black Series Boa Fett tutorial, which helped immensely in showing me how to disassemble the Boa Catan helmet for modding. Interested in joining a cosplay group with a casual carefree vibe? Check out the Imperial Outlanders. There are no screen accuracy or submission requirements, and you can troop with mashup costumes or original characters. Carefree cosplay for the galaxy is our motto. Check us out on Facebook and imperialoutlanders.com.